Welcome back you beautiful people and today is an experimental day. Yes, where I'm going to get a lot of numbers. I'm going to go super technical for myself where I'm going to be switching up my 29 inch wheel on the rear to a 27.5, turning it into a mullet bike to find out. Hey, did you say mullet Blake? No, mullet Blake, I said mullet bike. We're out here at Bike Park Wheels and we're going to find out which one's quicker. Oh, bust my ass there. Coming up, big gap, big gap, oh! Okay, for some of you that don't understand what a mullet bike is all about, well, it's two different wheel sizes, uh, and it's basically a 29 inch wheel on the front and 27.5 on the rear. Okay, for some of you racers out there, you're probably asking, is this legal? Well, back in 2019, the UCI pretty much said mixed wheel sizes are allowed throughout the events, so you can be racing downhill or enduro. Now, Specialized and Canyon are doing this already in the downhill bikes, which is pretty cool. Now, you're probably wondering, why mullet bikes? Well, having a 27.5 wheel on the rear, it makes that bike a lot more nimble when it comes to moving around on the trail. It means you can have a shorter chain stay. It means you've got a lot more wheel clearance. You don't buzz your ass that much if you had a 29 inch wheel. And the best thing about having a 29 on the front is because it can roll over a lot of ob obstacles quicker. And when you're going at high speed on the trail, it makes that bike a lot more stable as well. Earlier I did say we're going to talk tech. Yes, I've got my tech head on and numbers are going to be changing quite significantly and changing from a 29er to 27.5. The characteristics of this rig are going to change dramatically. So I've chosen my Canyon Strive CF 9.0. Now from factory standard, this bike comes with 29 inch wheels, front and rear. Now the unique thing about this bike is it has a shape shift system. And what that is, is you can change it from click to clack. And clack is the descent mode, which I'll be riding in today and where I got all these numbers from as well. Head angle on this bike as standard comes in at 66 degrees. Now mullet setting comes in at 64 degrees. So it's changed quite dramatically. The seat angle on this, as standard, is 73.5 degrees. Now, mullet setting is 71.5. Another dramatic change. Bottom bracket height, standard, is 37 centimeters. Now, obviously, with the mullet setting on this, it's going to drop it to 33 centimeters. The reach on this bike, standard, is 440 millimeters. Now, mullet setting, this is 420. The wheel diameter with tyre, standard 29 inch wheel, is 74.5 centimetres. Mullet with 27.5, this is 71 centimetres. So it's another dramatic change. So what do all these numbers mean in real life? Well, I'm going to put down a base time with 29 inch wheels, front and rear, down a trail, that one over there, and I use that as a base, and I'm going to go down the same trail again on a 27.5 and find out what it's all about. Before we start putting in race times, let me explain the route I'll be riding to compare the two different styles of bike. It's a combination of three trails, a blue, a red and a black. This will give me a vast variety of rough and steep, fast, wide open and a mixture of both in one. At the top, we have a black trail, rough, steep, tight and tacky, one called Die Hard. Then there's a quick fire road sprint into a blue trail called Willy Waver. Then a tight switch back from blue to a red trail called Rimdinger to finish it off. Course set, let's race. Okay, set a base time on the 29er. In three, two, one, go. Oh, bust my ass there. Super rough and steep. Oh, 
29, 29. I feel like way better at pedaling, still in descent mode. Blue run. for mullet blake mullet blake good luck oh my gosh that was hard work that was hard work dude it's time for the mullet man it's time to give that guy a run for his money in three two one jump Oh, I didn't even fuzz my seat, dude. times man oh. I'm super surprised I'm super excited as well because flipping the times I'm gonna have to go back to the shed work it all out to the exact second just to show you which one's quicker back to Blake in the shed I'm gonna break down the route I rode into three different segments we've got the black we've got the blue and we've got the red to finish now obviously we started off on the black, die-hard trails. You know, like I said, it's rough and steep and tight and techy. Let me give you the times that I put in, okay? I'm gonna start off with the 29er. Uh, I did it in one minute 54. And uh, the mullet bike, I did it in one minute 50. Hands down, I thought the 29er was gonna be way quicker through there, obviously, because it's a big wheel bike. It's gonna float over all that rough stuff, but I was wrong. And it felt totally different. So the 29er, I was quite neutral on the bike. I know how that bike rides. I've ridden it for a long time and I'm quite used to it. So what I mean by neutral on the bike is I couldn't really like get back over the wheel enough when it came to those steep descents, those tight techy steps. I couldn't get far enough. And plus riding the mullet bike, it filled me with so much confidence. Now, if anything that fills you with confidence, you're definitely gonna be riding a little bit more aggressive. You're gonna be riding a little bit more faster because you're comfortable riding a bike that suits you. Now, moving down to the blue trail. So it was a little sprint down the fire road, up the fire road, and then into the blue called Willy Waver. Now, this is a flat out trail. This trail is fast, it's flowy, it's jumpy. You wanna keep your speed maintained down this trail. Now, the times, the 29er, Two minutes, 22, which, yeah, it's a long trail-ish, you know, mullet bike, two minutes, 21. Definitely thought the 29 was gonna be quicker because it's big wheels, 
And when it came to the 27.5 on the rear of the Muller bike setup, I felt like it was a little bit boggy. I was pumping through the trail, I was like, oh man, it's boggy. And I thought that would be slowing me down. <laughs> Obviously not, because the times say different. Now the red trail. Now this was a bit of both. So it was rough, it was techy, it was fast flowing, and there was a nice big hip on it, which I quite enjoyed to hit. Now the times for this is, on the 29er was one minute 0 0.04. The mullet bike, one minute 0 0.02. Again, I felt so super comfort comfortable riding that mullet bike down that trail. Okay, after all of that, all those three segments combined, the overall time that I put in on the 29er was 4 minutes 37 seconds. Mullet bike was 4 minutes 33 seconds. That's a lot quicker. Now, if you were racing, you'd, 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 win, you'd win that. And it, it shows in the times that mullet bikes are fast. That was a big surprise because I've never done a t uh, mullet bike switch. I've done the reverse mullet just to be hilarious and see how horrible it is and it was amazing on climbing. Now talk about climbing when it comes to mullet bike. I climbed from the bottom of that trail to the uplift. It was the worst thing ever. <laughs> Even when I switched it from clack to click, which was my shape shifter on the Canyon Strive, it, I went into climb mode and it still felt like I was sat like that. It was terrible. So. I think the overall thing is if I was gonna race, I think this would be the best way to do it for me. I would definitely go to mullet bike. Now that's why all those downhill dudes are going to mullet bikes. Big hip. Oh, oh. Yes it is because the, EC, the ECU, the UCI is because the UCI did adapt it as my mouth's cold. 